So this is the reflective blog. Um, and in my class, I have um, a reflective blog and an integrative blog. So that's, um, if you, I'll just click on the link to my um, page really fast. So these are all my courses. Obviously, I need to update that because spring semester is well underway. <laughs> I don't do a lot with the um, posting there on my page. Um, so the class we're looking at is English 330. Um, and this shows you every, the way things are organized. And then um, uh, the thing that people find confusing is my calendar because I have sort of alternating between like integrated blog update, reflective blog, peer comments, and then vice versa. And that's all in this um, last column here. Um, but I think I have to have other ways to update students on those things because they get confused between the two activities. But nonetheless, both of these activities have value. And within VoiceThread, I know it's had a really um, positive effect on helping students um, connect to each other and really build community in the class so that now that we're beginning group projects, they feel confident taking those on. Um, so, um, so with the blog, you can see that um, I have instructions that are sort of just, you know, I've sort of just been working with instructions Michelle's given <laughs> in the past. And then um, I don't even do a voiceover of reading this at this point. I just kind of um, have students read it and go over it in class. Um, but if I were doing an online class, I would have my voice on each of the slides. Um, and you can see actually the, um, the slides has a list to um, the course calendar as well. Um, so these are all sort of standard issue things, I guess. And then um, if you look at all the slides, you see that there's one for each student. Um, and pretty much everyone's caught up with this. Um, there are some students for various reasons, just the same reasons students have to not be caught up with any assignments. Um, but for the most part, um, after the initial kind of adjustment period, I had a lot of adjustment in the beginning with CI keys, using CI keys, which there was some stuff going on with CI keys just as we started using it. So some students were having access issues. So a lot of the, once, they, once we started working with CI keys, they were having trouble, and then we got onto the vlog, the video log, um, and they were kind of, a lot of them were talking about like, oh, CI keys give me all this trouble, and the, but at least they got to vent to each other, I guess, about that, <laughs> and not feel alone. Um, and then as we go forward in the conversations, um, we find that it's more about the class content and just the students connecting to each other in different ways with what's going on in the class. Um, so when you listen to them all at once, it's interesting to hear, you know, eight weeks of a semester sort of unfold for you. Um, so in some ways, I guess it's kind of like a vine, which I don't really do vine, but <laughs> I think it's kind of like that, but in a longer way. And so they're po they, they alternate between um, updating on their own slide and then commenting on other students' slides. And so this is Claudia's slide, Claudia. And um, so most of my students have not put photos up, so you just see their initials, which actually is a little easier in some ways to know who they are. Um, but I do require video comments, and so that helps with the humanizing aspect. Um, and then as you go through, you can sort of see like the times when, oops, sorry, <laughs> ah, I didn't mean to do that, <laughs> when um, Claudia is um, doing her own updates versus when others are commenting. Hey guys, this is okay. the first vlog that I've ever had to do for a class. Uh, I think it's exciting since we get to communicate more outside of the classroom. Um, so my topic is looking at animals that are in captivity and their health issues. Uh, right now, I only have sources about wild animals in zoos and how they interact in that environment. I want to get more in depth of the different environments that affect them, not only physically, but mentally. Uh, there are a lot of sources out there, but I feel like they're a little too broad since there's so many different animals. The only question I have is like, I'm not sure if I should focus on a single type of animal or many different kinds. Right now, for now, um, I think I will try to focus on animals that have been affected the most by their environment. Um, there are different factors that go into researching an infected animal. Infected animal. They, look, they may look fine and physically healthy to a spectator at a zoo, but socially in their animal groups, they may not be, they might be antisocial and not interact with their environment, which is obviously not healthy. Um, I want to research this topic in different subjects like psychology, history, and biology. As for my annotated bibliography, I've done several from different courses, but I feel like for this class, this is an important part for this assignment since we will be covering different disciplines. It does help with organization on your paper and, you will, and it will help you remember what sources you have so far when completing your paper. Yeah. So the only advice I have for my classmates is not to get discouraged with workload. It's so easy to lose track of time and leave assignments until the last minute or in my case, the last day. Uh, 
So I look forward to seeing what everybody else has to say on their progress. Uh, I'll try to comment as fast as I can. I know it might be a little hard to comment on everybody, but I'm sure we'll get through it. All right, thanks. <laughs> Hi Claudia, um, this is also my first time doing a reflective vlog for a class and I think that it seems pretty interesting because I mean we can all kind of just talk to each other and see how we're doing in our work and school and yeah I think it, it'll be interesting. So and about your topic, it's kind of heartbreaking because I watched Blackfish. If you haven't seen it I definitely recommend it. It's just about whales and being um, held captive in SeaWorld and just kind of how they react to it and I think that it'll be easier for you and your research if you narrowed it down to like a certain place or a certain type of animal but just just to help you out with your research but I definitely think that it'll be a good one because it's really interesting and heartbreaking but I wish you good luck on it. Hey Claudia, um, this is my first time doing a reflective vlog as well. I've done voice threads before, but not like talking back to um, classmates. Um, I think your topic is uh, pretty uh, cool. I'm doing um, animals as well. I'm kind of narrowing it down to dogs. I want to talk about like the importance of um, of adopting a dog instead of going out and buying a dog because a lot of dogs are killed. Um, every day when they live in the shelter and um, just sad and um, yeah I'm just gonna talk about uh, how what like how they kill the dogs and how many days they're in the shelter and and something about why people why reasons why people take the dogs or animals to the shelter many times it's because they don't have time for them or they don't have money for them and how I'm also going to talk about how much cheaper it is to adopt a dog from the shelter than buying one off a of store or whatever. Hope you um, your paper comes out pretty good and see you in class. Hey Claudia, so I'm so there with you about um, not procrastinating and not giving up on you know the heavy um, course load. Because I feel like um, it is intimidating, especially when, you know, you're kind of going into uncharted territories with research and stuff, and especially when, you know, it may be new to you or, you know, stuff like that. So, but it's nice that as a class, we're all going through this together, so we all get to share, you know, like our struggles, our ups and downs kind of thing about, you know, this type of research. So that's nice. And then also I wanted to say that I'm really interested in your personal inquiry um, proposal and I can't wait to read it because I feel like animals, um, you know, although although they, although like a good portion of the um, population do care about animals, you know, and um, really make sure to uh, take care of the animals, I feel like a good portion forget that just like humans, um, animals are infected by their environment and it really overall affects their well-being and their social behavior. So I can't wait to read your um, project and see how you incorporate the three platforms of history, biology, and psychology into that. And then also to answer your question about whether or not you should do um, one animal or like um, like many animals, I think you had a great idea of um, kind of just finding the animals that are mostly affected by their environment. And then I was also thinking maybe you could just get like a small subset of animals, you know. Um, you know, like if you were to look at animals in the rainforest, you know, like something like that. Uh, just taking that broad um, topic and making it narrow. <laughs> but other than that, well, good luck and I can't wait to read it. Let's play two more. Hi Claudia, this is my first time with a vlog as well. I keep on calling it a V-log in my head, so I guess that needs to stop. I find it strange more than useful though, specifically it's uncanny. Ever since, well, forever, I was told that the little people in my TV screen cannot hear me and that I was a fool for trying to talk to them. 
<laughs> Suddenly, not only are the people in my TV, or rather computer monitor, real people that I see every week, but I can talk to them, and they can talk back. Somehow, I'm not talking to but I'm not talking to them. I'm recording a message and pretending that somehow that works as a method of conversation. I don't know. I guess I'll get used to it. Hey guys, thank you for commenting so far. Um, I wanted to say thank you, Yahida, for telling me about Blackfish. Um, I will be watching that movie and I thought that was really interesting. So thank you. And thank you, Clementa, for, for your support. I think it's comforting to know that we have similar topics and maybe we can help each other out if we find some topics that relate to each other's. And Ruby, I will be using your advice to focus on one subset. I think that would really help me tremendously since I want to focus on too many. And I think that would really overwhelm me later on. And Noah, um, no, I call it a vlog and a vlog. That actually helps me to remember. So, you know, it's okay. You can call it whatever you want since I call it a vlog. And I think that's even weirder than a vlog. Um, so thank you for commenting, you guys, and I can't wait to hear what everybody So, um, so that is an idea, and it kind of goes on, and you see that, um, students will get, that there's a part where they go into tips about starting, apparently I do more work in my class than another student does in three other classes he's taking that are all actually really online classes, so, <laughs> so, so apparently I use the online tools more than actual online courses that he's taking, um, but I think in my case, it's important. So I said, well, we're a writing class, so we have to do these things all the time. We're not just going to kind of, you know, read for six weeks and then take a test. Um, and it's also just it helps um, hold students accountable to each other because they can start to see the slides that are more filled and the slides that are less filled. And, it can, you know, it, it gives them it, – it's always better if they're feeling accountable to each other versus, you know, just to me. <laughs> um, and the um, – there's something else I was going to say about the um, – oh, the one thing I would do um, probably differently – and I might even do it this time, is that um, what happens, a lot of times I have students' slides organized alphabetically, but I think it would be helpful to organize them, um, to, sh to shake up the organization, to get people to comment on other people, because um, what happens is at the end of the alphabet, um, if you get a few people that, because like, they're supposed to comment on four different people um, every time they do the comments, but then towards the end it starts to kind of peter off, so um, poor Michael here has a lot of, <laughs> like, he's all these MWs here with not, you know, a lot of uh, comments back, and he's at one point he starts talking about it, um, feeling like interstellar, where he's sort of putting these messages out there in the universe, and he doesn't know when they're going to arrive. You know, will his daughter be 30 years old or 50 years old <laughs> in the future? And so, uh, and that, it kind of, you know, it sort of fits with um, his personality and sort of um, dry humor in the class, anyway. And so, um, I do, I realize that, um, that I think mixing up the order would be helpful next time. Um, Stacey, I'm going to ask you, uh, do you create the slides for the student or every student has to go in and, and create the slide? Um, what I do is I, I create a, a slide, um, a Google slide presentation in Google Docs, and then they each, um, and I have kind of a template. So you saw that she had a quote, they each had to have kind of a signature phrase or something that matters to them. And so um, they each make their own slide based on a little template I give and include a photo. Um, and then, um, although now I've worked with having students edit voice threads too, and I think that can work, but I think for this, I don't really want them to edit it because I don't want them to delete people's comments and things. Um, but yeah, I, I, most of what I tend to do with voice thread has been where I have students all go into Google Slides to create the content and then export that as a PDF and upload that into the voice thread. And you can modify it too. So I've, I've pulled out students, too, if they've dropped the class and things like that, so they're not just kind of sitting there.